Hello, family of God. This is Vicki and Chuck. Thank you for joining us today here at Vineyard Tabernacle. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing over here. We are very much rejoicing over here and being glad in it. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us today. Thank you for your precious, precious presence and your love for the King. I am I am so excited today. I've been watching the Lord move in just amazing ways today. And I know sometimes we don't see that like we would like to see it happen. And then every once in a while, God just does this little surprise. And it's so beautiful. But you guys, it really depends a lot on us, what we see. We can choose to look at the good things. We can choose to be worried. We can choose to be frustrated. We can choose to be angry. We've got lots of choices. Or we can choose just to look at our Father who is always good. Today I'm going to read chapter 6 in the book of Matthew. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them, otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father's father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy 
and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Father, thank you for these words. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us you are the provider. We worry about things we need not be worrying about. Please forgive us for that, God, because it's simply not trusting you. So forgive every time and remind us you are the provider. You are a good, good Father. Thank you for being who you are. There's no one out there like you, Father. You are always pure, always perfect, always holy. You are always beautiful beyond all description. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We pray over every one of your children, Father, that when we come to you, we would remember always to come with thanksgiving in our hearts. Forgive us for the times we have complained about a day or complained about circumstances. Forgive us for the times we have murmured in our hearts or our minds or even out of our mouths. Lord, you're doing a good job. We have nothing to complain about. Bless us to have eyes that see that everything that we're experiencing, everything that's in front of us, all of these things are opportunities for us to praise you and thank you and to grow because you have chosen to send us to this time and this place for your purposes. So help us see that the things we go through are blessings to teach us, to strengthen us, to humble us, to mature us in our walk with you, to remind us we cannot come up with the answers on our own. We need you in all things, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your goodness all of the time. Thank you for the joy that is set before each one of us as well. The joy that only comes when we see you in all your glory and, and live with you throughout eternity. So bless us, Lord to walk in humility before your throne, to endure to be steadfast in our love for you and to endure to the end. 
We pray for people and animals. We pray for your creation, God. And we cry out, have your way, holy God. It's always the right way. We bless your name, Lord. In the name of our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, the Word of God, we pray. Amen.